This project is a bit different than anything else that we've done here on the channel. I wanted to do something fun and go for a sci-fi theme. And you can see from the thumbnail that it's not a building, but a futuristic jet fighter slash spaceship. The rules were very simple. I had four different options created with Minjourney, and it simply asked you guys on social media and in our school group to vote for your favorite. I personally liked option number one the most, but you voted for number four, so that's the design that I'll try to 3D model in Rhino. This design took five or six live events and over 17 hours of modeling to, to get all the details right, including the rendering and preparation for the final 3D printing. Creating a model from a single reference image is very tricky, especially because of the details. When you don't have at least the top view, then getting the proportions right is kind of difficult. And that's what happened at the beginning when I was starting to model it. I tried eyeballing the length of the aircraft and then I tried to fit everything inside. And at the end of my first session, I had this shape, but I wasn't really satisfied with the uh, proportions. Uh, once I came back tomorrow to continue working on a model, then the proportions uh, seemed even more off, so I had to scale it down and this was actually a good thing because I still didn't start working on a detailing. I was still dealing with sub geometry which is much much easier to manipulate uh, compared to curved nerves surfaces. I did a lot of sketching on the live model to get those proportions right and once it was finished I took the time to create the side engines. One cool thing when you're creating vehicles like this is that they're symmetrical. So this spaceship was also symmetrical. So I just had to create the engine, one engine on each side and then mirror it. And uh, it will be the same on the opposite side. There was one issue that I came across here. Uh, it was regarding the inner engine. I wasn't sure if I should create it as a separate sub D or fuse it together with the main body. Initially I fused it, but after that I realized that it's better if I break it up. And that's uh, what ended up happening. Uh, I kind of lost some time here uh, because I was testing this out, but sometimes you just have to do these kind of things to know which approach uh, would work better. Uh, I also created uh, the back wing as a separate sub D object. And for this piece, I didn't use symmetry because it was already located exactly uh, in the middle of the ship. The next part was really crucial here. I started sketching out the details in 2D including the cockpit and other uh, front details. My strategy here was very simple, just create 2D lines, project them on the ship and see if the proportions make sense. I spent some time here going back and forth until I was happy with how the projected lines looked on the ship. And once the lines were close to perfect, then I duplicated the existing sub D, uh, placed it on a separate layer and used this as a backup just in case. Um, then creating the cockpit was really, really interesting because I had to rebuild this surface by using drape point command. This command allows you to create like many points on the existing surface. And then I used patch uh, command to rebuild the whole surface. Then we did some detailing. The exterior face of the cockpit was done and I started playing with the details on the top of the aircraft behind uh, the cockpit. This process was very similar. I used projected lines to cut the surfaces and then I started modeling the details. I didn't have much references for these details, so I modeled them based on my personal preferences. Uh, now when it comes to creating these stripes on the body of the spaceship, I used a special technique for that that I'd like to share here. So instead of using the projected curves and offsetting them directly on the surface, I used a little bit different approach. So first you want to extend those uh, projected lines a little bit, and then you create a small pipe with a small radius. And uh, once you have the pipe, then you split the body surface with that pipe. So this will result in a parallel stripe and uh, then you can simply extrude it or down the wrap depending on your preference. Uh, the reason why I use this approach is because uh, when you have a surface that is broken up, uh, offsetting the curve on those smaller subsurfaces won't always result in a continuous uh, offset. So these, uh, this offset really depends on the UVs of the subsurface. So you may get different offset results on different subsurfaces. So uh, when you're doing this with the pipe method, it always works. And that's why I use this for this uh, detail and some other details uh, as well. Here I created the stripes for the front area and then did a little bit more details on the top of the ship and placed everything in the correct layer so it would be easier uh, for us to uh, put the proper material later on. Then creating the body stripes was a little bit more difficult than I initially thought because the wing surfaces weren't uniform and I had a bit of problems adding details in this area. 
had to modify the back of the wings a little bit to give them that sharp look that we have in the reference image. The details on the wings were pretty straightforward, but I also made some changes here to make it a little bit more interesting. And you guys uh, mentioned on the live that it was way cooler uh, this way. After the wings um, came the engines, and here I used the same strategy. I used to create the details with projecting 2D lines, and then cutting up the surfaces, extruding, extruding them inward and upward, and placing some small intricate details here and there. The engine had uh, gave me most troubles because here I wanted to make it a little bit more sophisticated uh, with a couple of rings and a connection with the back uh, exhaust pipe. There were some issues with the uh, inner engine, especially uh, its connection with the body because this was supposed to be completely flush in the same uh, plane, but uh, at the end I ended up creating like extruded stripe along this line in order to hide some uh, small irregularities uh, on this connection and in the end the overall details and proportions turn out to be quite nice and I was really happy with the, with the final uh, detail at the end. Uh, of course, uh, the more details you have here, the more realistic and better the rendering will look, but you also have to decide when it's time to stop and simply call it a day. The next session was about creating the rendering in V-Ray. Uh, first here I was testing the general lighting conditions and I was deciding on what kind of mode uh, I need. Then I started searching for the right golden and black material combo that would really work well with the spaceship given that it's completely uh, black and also a little bit uh, golden. Uh, don't forget that I was trying to recreate exactly the same feel of the reference image. Once I found the right materials, I also played a little bit with the ground because I wanted to have a bit more detailing here as well. So the final shot doesn't look pale or without any context. That's why I opted in for a grid and at the end um, I played around with Photoshop to enhance the final shot. At the end I also created a couple of animations as well because you know once you had a fully textured model then you just modify the camera movement and you get uh, pretty cool results. Initially I wanted to uh, 3D print this model completely in color and also optimize the model for it but this turned out to be a nightmare because uh, it was a total waste of material because the prints uh, took such a long time to print and also my nozzle kept getting stuck so I had to throw away hours and days of printing and material. However, this single color 3D print turned out great. Uh, you can see it here in the image, but honestly, I don't enjoy coloring models like this, so I'll leave this for somebody who's more professional in this area. Here you can see the comparison of the white model and also the pieces of the colored model. So not all of the pieces were uh, printed out, but the ones that I printed, I also wanted to show you here so you can see the comparison, but you can kind of see what it would look like. And in case you'd like to check out the whole process from the start until the end, the whole 17 hours mini course, it's currently available in our How to Rhino Premium group. It's going to be available until the end of this August. And here you're also going to have at least one professional workshop per month where we're going to bring experts in different fields like AI and architecture, Unreal Engine, D5 and other interesting topics. Currently, we have a promo period for the first 250 members, so make sure not to miss it. It's the first link in the description.